Hello, my name is Mike and welcome to my first video of the Power Utility Wood Pole Inspection Fundamentals course. Please note that this video is part of a playlist that contains all the videos for this wood pole inspection course. So if you're interested in viewing the entire course, please visit the playlist link that I left in the YouTube video description below. So what would you get out of this course? Well, in this course, you will learn the procedures for detecting decayed or damaged poles. You will know how to estimate a pole's load carrying capacity and serviceability, as well as how to apply remedial preservative treatments to prevent or eradicate fungal or insect damages for these power poles. This course is for inspectors who are managing wood pole inspection program for a power utility company, as well as business owners who are running a wood pole inspection business that helps clients such as the power utility com companies to conduct their wood pole inspections. So now let us look at the course outline for my utility wood pole inspection fundamentals course. Now, we would first start off with this particular video, which is our wood pole basic video section. And then we will look at degradation and tools. So basically what this section contains, it's the different modes of degradation from wood poles, as well as the tools that you will need to conduct the pole inspection process. Then moving on from that section, we will then look at the actual pole inspection process. After that, we will look at uh, the various serviceability criteria for wood poles, as well as any of the remedial treatment that you can apply to the wood poles. Then we will look at um, the preservative handling. So basically, um, how do uh, there are a lot of safety requirements in terms of handling these type of uh, preservatives for remedial treatment, and I will go over all of that. And lastly, I'm going to talk about what data needs to be recorded in terms of your inspection, as well as the certification and auditing required for conducting business or um, conducting as a contractor for wood pole inspections. So there are various ways that you can connect with me. And uh, the most popular way that you can do so is through my uh, Twitter account and the YouTube channel, which is my, the YouTube channel that is hosting this video. And both of them are under the same name, which is the Double E Bootcamp. And for Twitter, you will get the latest news in the world of electrical engineering as I will post news daily in my Twitter channel. And if you have not done so already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel as you will then get various free training videos as like this one that you are viewing right now. And one thing to keep in mind is that this course is not a beginner's course. And I highly recommend you to take my distribution power engineering fundamentals course or the transmission and distribution line infrastructure fundamentals course to gain core knowledge of the distribution power poles that we are looking at in this course if you lack the fundamental knowledge of the distribution power system. Now, these two courses will provide you not only the prerequisite knowledge that you need to understand what I'm talking about in this course better, but also provide you with essential industry knowledge that will no doubt help you propel your career to the next level. Also, upon completion of the courses, you will get a certificate of completion, which you can show to your current or potential employers or your potential clients that you have mastered these fundamental concepts. I have left the links to my two courses in the video description below, so be sure to check it out. So now let's get started in our first section, which is the wood pole basics. 
Now, people in North America began using electricity and telephones more than hundreds of years ago, and the utilities of the time needed something to support the overhead conductors. And due to the abundance of trees in almost every part of North America, the obvious solution was wood poles, which have remained an important part of the electrical transmission distribution, and communication systems ever since, not just in North America, but actually all parts of the world. Trees, a renewable resource, comes in a variety of sizes and can suit most utility demands. From 30-foot poles used mostly for rural or communication-only services to 120-foot poles, which is mostly used as a transmission poles. Today, there are probably more than 200 million poles in service within just North America alone. And it is critical to maintain these poles and keep them in good working order in order to provide reliable service to customers that requires power. In-service wood poles all decay at some point in time, especially where they come into touch with the ground. Over time, utilities have acquired poles that have already been treated with a variety of chemical preservatives in order to reduce the decay process and so extend the pole's service life. Unfortunately, the initial preservative is just not 100% successful and maintenance examinations to evaluate the state of the poles are required from time to time. Now, before we move on further into our course, let us take a brief look at our sponsor for this course. Now, as an engineer, especially when I first started in my career, I really felt overwhelmed the list of documents that we need to do on top of our technical work. Yet, these documents are very important in our career as it is the more prominent thing that displays our credibility to management and to our clients if we so decide to become an engineer consultant, which is where the real actual money is. Now, I don't have these tools available to me when I first started my career, but now PM Milestone has created this package of all the professional templates that you need so that you can focus more on the technical aspect of your career. These templates are tried and tested by real professionals, so you should feel confident in using them in your career to present your best foot forward in front of your manager or clients. These templates are also updated periodically, and I think their last update is just 2021, so they're not going to be out of date or context to the present times as these people are serious in getting the most professional product to meet your needs. They're also very confident of the quality of these templates too, as they offer you their product completely risk-free with 60-day money-back guarantee if you are not satisfied with it. So, if you are interested in this product and would also like to support me in creating these courses on YouTube in the future, please check out their product using the link in my video description titled Course Sponsor PM Milestone 2.0. Poles were initially made from wood species such as western red cedar and chestnut, but demand quickly outstripped supply. Chestnut was phased out, and western red cedar and indigenous softwood became the dominating species for making wood poles. Softwood species have been used to make all wood poles produced in the last, I mean, around 100 years. Pines, western red cedar, and Douglas fir are common softwoods used for poles. Distribution poles are mostly constructed of red pine, jack pine, lodgepole pine, and western red cedar, while transmission poles are mostly made of western red cedar with some Douglas fir sprinkled here and there. On the other hand, the bulk of distribution length poles in North America are manufactured of uh, southern yellow pine, red pine, lodgepole pine, western red cedar, and Douglas fir if you're looking southwards in the North American continent. 
um, Douglas fir, western red cedar, and some southern yellow pine are also used in this uh, section to construct transmission poles. Now, all of the species have high mechanical properties, um, but with the exception of western red cedar, be, uh, as they all lack natural durability, especially when in contact with the ground, necessitating preservative treatment prior to installation of these poles. Now, the tree is separated into several zones where the outer and inner barks protect the tree while it is developing, but are peeled off when a cut tree is manufactured into a wood pole. Sapwood is a creamy white strip of wood that grows new sapwood as fluids travel up and down the tree. Heartwood, which is ancient dead sapwood and frequently darker than sapwood, is found within the sapwood. Sapwood thickness varies not only between uh, species but also within the species itself. And because sapwood is the only wood that can be pierced by wood preservatives, its thickness is very significant. And depending on the preservative employed, the sapwood changes color throughout the treatment process. Now, Western Red Cedar sapwood is quite thin, um, only around, around, I think, 0.75 inch thick. And the sapwood of red pine, on the other hand, can be up to two inches thick. Lodgepole pine and the jack pine sapwood is moderately thick, up to 1.5 inches. And the sapwood of the southern yellow pine can be very thick, as it can be up to five inches. So the Canadian standard CSA 015 and the American standard NC 5.1 both include dimensioned and strength tables for all wood pole species used in North America, as well as other criteria to ensure that only trees with the appropriate properties are used to make wood poles. Pole lengths range from 20 to 125 feet in 5 foot increments, with 13 strength categories ranging from class 7 to class H6. And depending on their transverse tip load capacity, poles are divided into several class sizes, as load apply at 2 feet from the top. Class 7 to Class 1 poles, for example, are smaller and shorter poles, and they are mainly used in distribution, with an average transverse tip load capability of 1,200 pound-feet and the Class 1 poles with an average tip load capacity of 4,500 pound-feet. An example of what the table looks like in these standards are shown in front of you right now. And this particular table that I show in front of you is for pine poles. And the bending strength of wood fibers, which is uh, in, in regards to what they call the modulus of rupture or MOR, varies greatly between species. So I'll give you some numbers. For example, Douglas fir is around um, 8,000 PSI and the Western Red Cedar can be around 6,000 PSI. And tables for each species are included in the standards in detail, listing the length and circumference requirements for each pole class. And for distribution size poles, the circumference is measured six feet from the pole butt, which is roughly the ground line circumference for many of these poles. Now, one thing that I want to note is that the poles in the H class are larger and longer. Generally, these are used for transmission applications. And class H1 poles, for example, have a transverse tip load capacity of 5,400 pound foot, whereas H6 poles have a tip load capacity of 11,000 pound feet. Now, as you can see, um, the classes are actually quite different in terms of numbering, which the H1s are in ascending order, whereas the class uh, numbering system are of descending order, which means that class one is actually the strongest. In the subsequent videos, we will look at how we can inspect these poles. But before that, I actually wanted to talk to you that um, with this course, I would highly recommend you to get a copy of the CSA 015 or the ANSI 05.1 standards, as I will be referring um, to the uh, information in the standards during uh, the various sections within this course. 
As mentioned in the introduction of this course, I highly recommend you to take my Distribution Power Engineering Fundamentals course or the Transmission and Distribution Line Infrastructure Fundamentals course to gain core knowledge of the distribution power poles that we're looking at in this course. These two courses will provide you not only the prerequisite knowledge that you need to understand what I'm talking about in this course better, but also provide you with essential industry knowledge that will no doubt help you propel your career to the next level. Also, upon completion of the courses, you will get a certificate of completion, which you can show to your current or potential employer that you have mastered these fundamental concepts. I have left the links to my two courses in the video description below, so be sure to check it out. Also, this video is part of a playlist that contains all the videos for this wood pole inspection course, so if you are interested in viewing the entire course, please visit the playlist link that I have left in the video description below. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in my other videos.